good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our 4 p.m. live Bible study. How are you doing? Welcome, welcome. So it is me, Brother Ron from Metanoia Christian Ministries, and I am blessed to be here today. So praise, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Welcome, welcome, mga kapatid. So um, anyway, you know, last night medyo nabitin tayo dun sa ano, um... Medyo nabitin tayo dun sa Tagalog uh, Bible study natin. You know, unfortunately, the signal was not uh, was not cooperating and the signal was not so stable. So what happened was um, we decided to cut the video short. And I just uploaded, um, I, did, I did a new video and we uploaded it to the YouTube page. So if you missed the, the Tagalog message, if you missed the Tagalog Live Bible study, you can go... You can find it. It's it's somewhere on the wall of the Metanoia Christian Ministries page. Or you could go check um, on YouTube. You could just type in Metanoia Christian Ministries and uh, Tagalog Live Bible Study is there. You will find it. So praise the Lord. You know, you know it's interesting. Actually, you know, it's a, it's a great opportunity. I love... Um, it, it's a great opportunity for me to practice yung Tagalog. You know, kasi it's a different discipline. Iba yung Tagalog na conversational eh. You know, iba yun eh. Iba yung ganitong usapan, madali makipagkwentuhan. You know, it's easy to speak, um, you know, and shift between two languages. But when you actually have to preach the word of God, <laughs> it's something else. You know, it is something else. And uh, definitely, you know, definitely, definitely, it's a, it's a great opportunity for me to sharpen myself. And I'm learning too. You know, um, again, every translation of the Bible has something to offer, something unique and something interesting. So, um, I'm seeing a lot of things in the Tagalog translation, you know, and uh, there are other differences between the English and the other. And anyway, it's, it's a fun experience and I'm just happy to have this opportunity to, to share and to teach in Tagalog. You know, I'm still, I'm still, iba eh. Iba talaga pag Tagalog yung lumalabas, you know what I mean? So, um, so praise God. Praise God, at least yung mga kapat, kapatid natin na mas... Uh, those who prefer to listen to Tagalog preaching or read the uh, Tagalog or Filipino Bible, then uh, at least may avenue tayo, di ba, na makapag-share. Uh, so, you know, that's great. And um, again, if you guys notice, I do speak mostly in English here because we do have a lot of viewers from other parts of the world, our ministry partners from all over in different countries. So, kung papansin ninyo, when I, if you notice, when I speak in Tagalog, I I immediately translate it to English afterwards. It's for our brothers and sisters in different countries who are watching who are not um, who who do not speak Filipino or, or or are maybe non-Filipino. So anyway, praise the Lord for this uh, opportunity. So today, guys, I got I have an interesting message. I I was praying and praying about um, about what to share. Like eight different things <laughs> that I wanted to share with you guys today. And dami kong nagawang notes. And dami kong nagawang, you know, I've been, um, there's so much that I wanted to share. So much I wanted to teach on. There's, there was Moses and then there was uh, end times and there was this and there was, I was like, Lord, ano ba talaga? Parang ang daming, ang daming tumatakbo sa, ang daming tumatakbo sa isip ko ngayong araw. You know, there's so many things running on my mind and I am not sure like what, what what is your message to your people and then he kept on bringing me back to a certain passage and uh yeah so it's awesome you know I'm, I'm excited to share this word with you guys actually just a heads up you know just a heads up this is um I don't know how long ago did I teach that message but I have a teaching it's called the title of the message is called speak life okay I, I talk about the power of words and um, like how does it work what happens when you speak forth God's word why why is it you know why is it important um, I don't have time to talk about all that right now but if you do if you are if you have not watched it if you are um, if you want to understand more about it please check out our YouTube page Metanoia Christian Ministries and just type in speak life you know it's what it's in one there it's in one of the messages there you can find it on a playlist of uh, my teachings and all that. Anyway, so to those who are just tuning in, welcome to our 4 p.m. live Bible study. And uh, you know what, guys? Uh, ECQ is almost over. 
Um, again, just a small announcement. After this, when uh, ECQ is lifted, we will we will move to a once a week Bible study and not every day anymore since uh, we all got to go back to work. <laughs> but I'm still going to be here once a week to teach an English message and once a week for a Filipino or Tagalog message. Amen. So, we're, we'll, I mean, we're, we're still going to see each other here. We're still going to be in contact. But a lot of you guys are going to be plugging into our uh, freedom groups anyway, at least to those in the Metro Manila area. Um, you guys, uh, I, 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 several of you have gotten in touch with us. Um, the youth group, Metanoia Young, Young Adults Group, is growing massively. And uh, we have... Um, we have our main group, which is on Wednesday nights. We will be updating you regarding the location because it still depends based on what's happening on the GCQ, whatever the guidelines are. So we will have regular meetings once again. And um, aside from that, we have several workshops and events. So in the in our headquarters in Sampaloc, although um, we will be able to conduct um, a ministry training Right, ministry training modules. So those are going to be on Saturdays from two to five, but only twice a month. We will we will update you guys, but those are those are um, there are limited slots. There are only twenty five people that can fit in that <laughs> in that place. So um, you will need to let us know, right? And then I pray that things will relax and this virus will really die down, so we can have our services once again, our workshops here and there, and um, yeah. Please continue to pray with the ministry. Pray, pray for the country. Pray for the government. Pray for everybody. You know that the, that life may just go back to normal and things would get better. Amen. Amen. All right. So, anyway, let's start off with a prayer because we have a lot of scripture to go through today. Amen. So let, let us pray. Let us pray. Lord God, Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you for my brothers and sisters who are watching this. Lord, you know each and every one of us here. You know our hearts. You know what's going on in our lives. You know our struggles. You know our battles. You know what strengthens us. You know, Lord, Lord, you know what's going on. And just right now, right now, Father, we just lift. Father, I pray that this time today, as we have fellowship with your word, Lord, through the power of your Holy Spirit, I pray that these words, this revelation would just come alive in their hearts. I pray that every one of us, Father, would just, that you would just speak to our hearts through this passage, through this message, and I pray that this would be a blessing to everyone who is watching. So, Lord, we lift up this whole time to you. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, the passage of which I want you guys to go to today is in Luke chapter 1. So, I'm, I'm going to be reading from the NASB, New American Standard Bible, okay? So, uh, I want to share on Luke chapter 1, and yeah, you guys know the story. It's about, uh, it's about how John the Baptist received. So, um, very interesting, very interesting uh, passage here, very interesting passage. But there's so much to learn, so much, so much richness, you know. So, I pray that I won't go too much over time <laughs> this time. All right. So let's go, Luke chapter 1. I'm going to read through it. Luke, Luke chapter 1, not the whole chapter, it's really long. <laughs> but Luke chapter 1, verses 5 till 20, okay? Luke chapter 1, verses 5 until 20. So this talks about John the Baptist, how he was conceived and what happened, right? Luke chapter 1, verse 5, NASB. It says, In the days of Herod, king of Judea, there was a priest named Zacharias, of the division of Abijah, and he had a wife from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. They were both righteous in the sight of God, walking blamelessly in all the commandments and commandments of the Lord. But they had no child because Elizabeth was barren. They were both advanced in years. So, matanda na po sila, no? Now, it happened that while he was performing his priestly service before God in the appointed order of his division, according to the custom of the priestly office, he was chosen by lot to enter the temple of the Lord and burn incense. And the whole multitude of the people were in prayer outside at the hour of the incense offering. Verse 11. 
and an angel of the Lord appeared to him, standing to the right of the altar of incense. Zacharias was troubled when he saw the angel. Fear gripped him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your petition has been will bear you a son and you will give him the name John. You will have joy and gladness and many will rejoice at his birth for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He will drink no wine or liquor. He will be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb. And he will turn many to the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God. It is he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and in the power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children and the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous so as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zacharias said to the angel, How will I know this for certain? For I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years. Then the angel answered and said to him, I am Gabriel who stands in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. And behold, you shall be silent and unable to speak until the day when these things take place, because you did not have my words, which will be fulfilled in their proper time. Oh, so, so this is pretty crazy, right? Imagine this old, he's an old priest, his wife is an old priest, he's been praying. He's been praying for, uh, for a child. You know, even uh, even Elizabeth said that, oh, the Lord has taken away my shame in my in my old age. You know what I mean? Because she she did not have a he did she did not have a, have a child, and they were unable to have children. But um, here's God's answer, and the Lord sent an angel, the angel who stands in His presence, the angel Gabriel, same angel that talked to Daniel uh, Daniel in the book of Daniel, right? And um, not only does the angel come, he says amazing things. He said that uh, he, he opens up by saying, don't be afraid, <laughs> obviously, because uh, angels are mighty creatures. And if they do appear to you physically, it's a it's quite the experience. You know, um, you will always see in the Bible, even Daniel fell down and could not get up because the, the glory was just something else. Like this is a, this is a being that stands before God in the presence of God. Right. So he said, do not be afraid. Your petition has been heard. So this is an answered prayer. It says here that Zacharias has been petitioning, has been praying to the Lord, right? And that, that, that his wife will bear a son and not just any son, okay? It says here that, that he, will, he will be, um, they will have joy and gladness. Many will rejoice at his birth, right? He will be great in the sight of the Lord, you know, well, he, he would be set apart. He will have no, no wine or liquor. This, this uh, coincides with uh, the Lord's guidelines that he gave for the Nazarites, right? So, um, and he will be filled with the Holy Spirit while yet in his mother's womb. This is the only time that you, you see anyone in the Bible being filled with the Spirit even from his mother's womb, right? This is, this is something else. This is something else. Like nobody else in the Bible was filled with the Spirit and is explicitly stated, since the mother's womb, he was already Spirit-filled. You know, in the New Testament, we get baptized in the Holy Spirit. When we when we believe in Jesus, we receive his Holy Spirit. But when you are filled with the Spirit, that's when, you know, you get baptized, you overflow. And that, that's something else. But this guy is Spirit-filled from his mother's womb. And look at this, verse 16. He said, he will turn away the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God. It is he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and in the power of Elijah. And Elijah was one of the most respected prophets. I mean, he is like one of the, the greatest prophets that they, they ever, um, they think about it. He was taken up to heaven. He didn't even die. And they're saying that here is a power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. And so that, that verse right there, that is a quote from Malachi four, verse six, you know? So, and, and, and Zacharias knew that. Zacharias is a priest. He knew the scriptures. Malachi 4 verse 6 is the last verse in the Old Testament. Before the 400 years of silence, before all this started, the, um, the, the, the final, the final uh, words of, of, of uh, Malachi were this prophecy. That he will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. And this is it. And this is the fulfillment 
So Gabriel was announcing that your son is the fulfillment of prophecy, right? So this is a big deal. This is a very, very big deal, right? And um, as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord, he will prepare the way for the Lord. He's the forerunner. It is the fulfillment of Malachi's prophecy that your son will be the one to prepare the way for the coming Messiah. And Zacharias knew this. Zacharias knew this. He's a priest. It's his job. So he knew the scriptures. He knew what was going on. Yet look how he responded. He responded. He said, how is this going to happen? How is this going to be? Where is that? Uh, how, do, how will I know this for certain? I am an old man and my wife is advanced in years, right? And then the angel answered to him and introduced himself. He said, I have been sent here to bring good news, but behold, you shall be silent and unable to speak until the day when these things take place because you did not believe my words. So my words. So whatever it is, the angel Gabriel was able to discern that Zacharias was filled with unbelief. Okay? Okay, let's pause there. So that's Zacharias. Now let's move forward a few verses and um, let's skip down. Still, Luke chapter 1. Luke chapter 1. Skip down a few verses. Go to Luke uh, 1 verse 26. Now I want to read you the story of Mary, about what Mary, what happened to Mary, right? Verse 26, it said, Now in the sixth month, of uh, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city in Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the descendants of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And coming in, he said to her, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was very perplexed, just confused. He was perplexed at this statement and kept pondering what kind of salutation this was because an angel shows up but see this is what happened she wasn't perplexed at the angel she was perplexed at the statement favored one the lord is with me what does that mean huh so right but she did not tremble or fall in fear or whatever she was just she was confused by what he said not at his appearing so that's something else that we should know uh, anyway so verse 30 then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, as you would usually do. Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall name him Jesus. He will be great, and he will be called the Son of the Most High. And, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and his kingdom will have no end. So, wow, it is awesome, right? Verse 34, Mary asked the same thing that, that Zacharias did. She said, how can this be? And it's actually, okay, in, in this translation, um, um, Zacharias is said to have, Zacharias would ask the angel, how could this be certain? You know, here it says, how can this be? Actually, if you read in the original language, in the original text in the Greek, it, 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 both of them ask the same question. How shall this thing be? How shall this thing happen? You know, it's the same question. It's just worded differently here. But anyway, Mary said to the angel, she said the same question to, to Zacharias, uh, as Zacharias asked. He said, how can this thing be? How can this be since I am a virgin? Right? 35. The angel answered and said to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And the power of the Most High will overshadow you. And for that reason, the Holy Child shall be called the Son of God. And behold, even your relative Elizabeth has also conceived a son in her old age. And she who was called barren is now in her sixth month. For nothing will be impossible with God. Okay, verse 38. And Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word, and the angel departed from her. So guys, that's an amazing story. Like a lot of us know it, but we don't really spend time here because this is like during Christmas season or, <laughs> or, or whatever, right? But um, this is super important. There's a good, good lesson to, um, there's a very good lesson here that we, that we need to learn and we need to see. So some things, there are two stories here. You have Zacharias and you have Mary, okay? Zacharias was an old priest and he was praying to God for a son. And then finally, now an angel comes and gives him the good news. 
And not only does he get a son, he gets a son that fulfills prophecy. And not only does he have a regular son, he has a, has a spirit-filled son that from the womb of his mother is already spirit-filled. And, and how did Zacharias respond? He responded in unbelief. And now here you have Mary, right? Here you have Mary who an angel appeared, but she wasn't fearful. She wasn't afraid of the angel. She was confused, perplexed about what he said, right? And then when she asked, she actually asked the same question. How shall this thing be? How shall this thing? She asked the same question that Zacharias did. But for Zacharias, he was struck mute. He was unable to speak. All right? But for Mary, Gabriel, the, the archangel, responded differently. Why is that? Think about it. Think about it. Gabriel said to both of them, don't be afraid. They both asked questions. One said, um, one said, how shall this thing be? I'm old and my wife is old. Right? Mary said, how shall this thing be? I'm a virgin. How am I, how is that going to, how is it? You know, if you, if you think about it, you know, um, if you think about it, it's the same question. They both offered, they both uh, spoke forth the same question. How shall this thing be? And they both had the reasons why it was impossible. You see, for, for Zacharias, it's because he was old and his wife was old. For Mary, it was because of vir she was a virgin. And I, that's true. How is it possible that you're going to have a virgin birth that's never been done? And never will be done ever again. This is the only virgin birth, you know? Um, so, so they both wanted to understand how it would be possible. And, and given that they both had certain physical limitations one was old wife was barren one was virgin so how, how does that happen right so both of them questioned gabriel but one was made silent and the other received an explanation so you see brothers and sisters here's my here's here's what i want to point out this is this is where i want to go today our words can be the same you know our words can be the same you and me we can say the same thing but it could mean something completely different. Amen. We, you and I could say the same thing. You and I could say the same words, the exact same sentence, the exact same thing, but the intention behind our words would be different. What you say already matters, right? But what you say, the meaning can change depending on how you say it. Amen. Amen. See, that's the, that's the thing. You know, that, that's, only, that's only one part of it. You, you see what I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters? What you say, I can, I can say, I can say uh, the exact same words as someone else, but it could mean something completely different because it, it, it matters how you say it, you know? And, the, and when you, when it's a combination, the way we communicate, it's not just words, you know? It's not just the words, but it's how we say the words, right? Yung parang yung mga mag -asawa. Diba? Pag nagkakatampuhan, pwedeng may, pwedeng may I love you, pwedeng yeah, I love you. Diba na, you know what I mean? The way you say it also matters. Yung sorry, pag sorry ka, may kaibigan ka, may atraso ka, iba yung parang, I'm sorry. You know, Raza? Sige, sorry. You know, parang, the way you say it matters also. The way you say things or how you say things changes also and equally affects the meaning of the words. So it's not just what you say, it's also how you say it. But most importantly is why you say it. Amen? So again, let, let's, the words can be the same. As you see, um, Zacharias and Mary both asked the same question with the same angel when they got the good news. They asked the same, how shall this thing be? Right? But there was a difference in response. One was made mute and silent because of his unbelief. One had received an explanation and was able to talk to the, 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 the angel continuously. So, you know, it's not just what you say. It's not just how you say it. It's why. The intention behind our words. Very important, brothers and sisters. Words have power. And again, I told you guys earlier, I do have a teaching on the power of words also, right? That you, you could go check that out. The title of that message is called Speak Life. 
So I encourage you to watch. That's a very powerful message. Anyway, so in Proverbs 18, verse 21, this is in the NASB version. Proverbs 18, verse 21. Check this out for yourself. Again, guys, when I cite passages and verses, I, I really encourage you to go to your Bible and look at this. You know, don't quote me, don't quote Brother Ron, don't quote Pastor Macho or whoever, or Brother Eric. No, no, no. You quote the Bible. You know, quote the Bible. So that's why everything we say here, we point to a verse. So please, you know, go to your verses, open your Bible. It's very important. Anyway, Proverbs 18, verse 21. It says, death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Brothers and sisters, words have power. Words have power. But it's not just your words. It's not just how you say words. It's the intention behind your words. You see? See, brothers and sisters, because anyone can read a Bible verse. Some people read it uh, more eloquently than others. Sa Tagalog, yung mga makata, magaling magtalumpati, magaling magsalita, magaling, you know? Uh, people can speak it, they could be eloquent in how they speak. But the intention is what matters. The intention behind our words is what matters. So it's not just what you say. I mean, that's important. What you say is important. How you say it is, is also equally important. But the most important thing is why you say it. The intentions behind our words and how we say our words, that is what matters you know because the words what what we say and how we say it actually reveals our hearts you know that it says in matthew 12 verse 34 uh this is from the king james it says that out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks right uh, i'm not sure in other translations i think it's out of the overflow of your heart or from the fullness of your heart a heart comes out of the mouth something like that but in the king james it says out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He was rebuking the Pharisees here. He was saying, you generation of vipers, how can you being evil speak good things? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So if you have an evil heart, evil things will come out of your mouth. If you have a good heart, good things will come out of your mouth. Your mouth and your words will expose what's in your heart. Your mouth will expose the things that come out of your tongue. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Are you speaking forth death? Then death rules in your heart. If you speak forth life, then it reveals that life is, is ruling in your heart. Brothers and sisters, so many of us, so many of us are so careless with our words. So many of us don't care about what we say. So many, care, so, so many, so many people, so many Christians are, are very... Um, abusive with their words you know and, and they don't they don't steward those words properly because there is power in words you know again going back to Zacharias and Mary they asked the same thing you know they asked the same thing how shall this thing be in the Greek you read it it's the same thing how shall this thing be but they received different responses why because they had different intentions one desire, one spoke forth out of unbelief and he was made mute. One spoke forth seeking to understand. There is a different, same words, different, different intention, you know? You know, the, there are a lot of Christian cults out there and they use the Bible, but they twist the Bible. They use scripture to fit the way they like it, to get it. So, so the same words, and they could speak it so eloquently, they could speak it so well, and they could memorize so much chapters and chapters, but the intention, there's a problem, you know? So it exposes the root, whatever the fruit is. You know, so that's why don't don't just buy cheap talk. Oh, wow, galing magturo, oh, galing magpreach. Yeah, no, 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 no. Go look at the fruit. Go look at the fruit of the life of the person. Go look at the fruit of the life of, of, of the ministry or of the church. It's not just who's the best speaker. Is, is, the, is the word of God actually alive? Anyway, so I, I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I, I don't want to go too deeply there. But uh, anyway, uh, so again, guys, your words, it's not just what you say. It's not just how you say it, but it's why. Really matters. Your words are important. You know that your words will either justify you 
or condemn you. You know that? Your words will either justify or condemn you. Jesus said so himself in Matthew 12, uh, verses 36 and 37. Matthew 12, verses 36 and 37. It says, But I tell you that every careless word that people speak, they shall give an accounting for it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified. By your words you will be condemned. Now why would Jesus put so much weight or importance on words? Because it reveals our hearts. Our words reveal our hearts. You know, really, it's not just something you say. It's not just something. That's why lying is is uh, considered just as bad a sin as, as murder or rape or whatever. Sin is sin. Guys, you know, I just want to tell you this. In the eyes of God, sin is sin. It's not, like, like, none of us have the right to say, oh, he's a worse sinner. He's a worse sinner. He's did this. He's done that. He's killed. I just did this. No. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Every, it doesn't matter what your sin is. You don't make it to God's standard. Okay? So in God's eyes, sin is sin. And he puts a heavy, heavy, heavy um, uh, importance on words. You know, go to Revelation 21. The book of Revelation 21, verses 7 and 8. This is crazy. I don't know if you guys have, have come across this passage, but it says, Revelation 21, verses 7 and 8, NASB, it says, He who overcomes will inherit these things, and I will be his God, and he will be my son. But for the cowardly, the unbelieving, abominable, murderers, immoral persons, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars... All liars. Their part will be in the lake stone, which is the second death. Yung sino ngaling, tigam mo ko sino kasama niya. Unbelieving, cowardly, abominable, murderers, immoral person, sorcerer, idolater. All liars. This lumps in all the. Everyone is lied. Everyone lies. Everyone is lied. You know what I mean? Everyone slips up and says something. You know. So my point is that. This shows the importance of words. All liars, people who do not steward truth properly, people who do not steward their words properly, people who do not, um, who do not uh, respect the value of words that death and life are in the power of the tongue. People who do not respect... Now, now guys, don't get me wrong. Everybody's lied, right? Everybody's lied. Everybody slips up. Everybody says something that they don't mean. It, 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 it happens. But it says here that the Lord is not pleased with that. So I'm not saying that when you lie, you go to hell. No, you have to understand grace. I'm not here to teach that right now. If you want to learn more about grace and what it actually means according to the Word of God, please check out my message called Amazing Grace. Okay? But anyway, so my point here is that God is displeased with lying. And God is displeased with lying because it is not proper stewardship of the power of words that were given to us. That when you speak forth a lie, it reveals something wrong in your heart. Right? So, in the kingdom of God, words will make or break us. It's important that we properly steward our words. Now, guys, don't get me wrong. I'm not saying do not be sin conscious. Do not condemn yourselves. I'm just trying to drive a point here. Okay? I'm not talking about being sin conscious. Be Christ conscious. Because the more you focus on not lying, the more you're going to end up lying. Okay? The more you focus on trying to control your sin, the more sin will control you. So focus on Christ, not on the sin. If you struggle with this, focus on Christ. Again, I say that if you focus uh, uh, on trying to control sin, the more sin will control you. That's not how it works. Do not be sin conscious. Be Christ conscious. I'm just pointing out that God is not pleased with lying. There is an importance to our words. For our words, uh, what and how we speak will reveal the why, which is the heart, the intentions of the heart, right? So again, words will make us or break us, really. Because in the kingdom of God, look at this. In, in Romans 10, go to Romans 10. Romans 10, flip over verses 8 to 10. Romans 10, verses 8 to 10, it says in the NASB, What does it say? The word is near you, in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we are preaching. Verse 9, that if you confess with your mouth, right? If you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart 
that God raised him from the dead will be saved. Right? The mouth is just an evidence of the overflow of the heart. Now, if you believe in your heart, it'll overflow. It'll come out of your mouth. You know, these are not steps. This, these are not steps to salvation. Okay, listen to me. The point here is that Paul is saying that if you genuinely do believe Jesus in your heart, truly, he is your Lord, he resurrected on the third day, he is your Christ, he is your Savior, your Messiah, it will come out of your mouth. Because out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Matthew 12, 34, right? So it says again, 10, 9, if you confess with your mouth Jesus as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness. With a mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. You know, this is, this is like faith and works. So you, you, know, you don't work to prove your faith, but genuine faith will come out with works. If you truly believe in your heart, it'll come out. It'll come out naturally. You don't have to be conscious. You don't have to force it. You don't have to manipulate it. You don't have to control or whatever. No, no, no. I, I mean, you, you know what I mean. Not, not control. Control yourself. But your heart... You don't have to force it to produce works. It will just come out. Naturally, it will come out. So, guys, again, our words, both what and how we say it, reveal the why. What is in our hearts? So, so again, let's go back to Zacharias. Let's go back to Zacharias. Why was he silenced? Why was he silenced? Remember, the angel Gabriel said, because of your unbelief. Because of your unbelief, right? He spoke forth his doubt and his unbelief. So he said the same question Mary said. He offered an explanation to why. How shall this thing be? I'm old. My wife is old. She's buried. How, how could this thing? So it's not just what he said. It's not just how he said. Maybe he said it in a way na parang, huh? Anong pinagsasabi mo yun? Paano mangyayari yan? Di ba? Parang maybe he was sarcastic. Maybe he said it in a tone of unbelief. I don't know. But regardless of what and how he said, it revealed in his heart that he was doubting. He was doubting that an angel of God could do this. He was doubting that God could do it. He was doubting that God that God could do and answer his prayer. You know, could could do what he promised, uh, what he what he said, and could you know could bless him with such a thing. He spoke in unbelief. You know. So here's the thing. Why was he silenced? Why was he silenced? Why? Brothers and sisters, because unbelief can hinder the word of God. I'm going to say that again. Unbelief can hinder the word of God. That is precisely why in, in Luke 1 verse 20, it said, Luke 1 verse 20, it said, Behold, you shall be silent and unable to speak until the day when these things take place. Because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled. So meaning, meaning, something could happen in between. Because of his unbelief that he spoke forth, he speaks forth death. Or he speaks forth unbelief. Guess what? Words have power. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it will eat the fruit thereof. If you, if you speak a word, it's like a seed. And when that seed grows, it turns into a fruit. So... What happens? If you speak forth unbelief, what kind of fruit will you bear? If you speak forth words or seeds of unbelief or seeds of negativity or seeds of death, what do you think would happen? It exposes a heart of unbelief. But the problem is people who have so much unbelief in their heart out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. All they speak is just negativity. Just one after the other. You know, there is a scripture in the King James. It says, in the King James, it says, uh, uh, Proverbs 23, verse 7. It says, As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. Okay? As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Kung ano yung iniisip mo sa puso mo, yun ka. Guys, think about it. Notice this. Yung mga taong sobrang negative. Look at those people, even in your own friends list on Facebook or Instagram or social media. Those people who post nothing but hate and anger and bitterness and all this. Look, look, look at this. Look at the fruit of their lives. Look at the fruit of their lives. 
right? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Mouth speaks, words have the power of life and death. And as you think in your heart, then so are you. That's, that's what it is. Then that's your life. That's who you are. The contents of your heart, the heart reveals who you are. The heart reveals who, where you find your identity. And Zacharias was here, so he was speaking forth his doubt. It's silly because he prayed for it. It said, Gabriel said that he petitioned for it. But he did not believe and he had unbelief that God answered his prayer, even though there's an angel in front of him. You keep it, Sabi niya, your petition has been heard. Your petition has been heard. So he, he prayed to God. He received the answer to the prayer. And when the answer was there, he was saying, So, anong tawag dun? Diba? What do you call that? <laughs> anyway, so my point is this guy was speaking forth his unbelief. His heart was filled with unbelief. He didn't, he didn't even have the faith to believe that God could answer his prayers. He doubted. He got the answer to his prayers and when it was there, he couldn't accept it. He couldn't fathom it. He was like, Totoo ba to? Parang ba to? Doubt pa rin eh. So much so that Gabriel had to silence him. Why? Because if he spoke forth his unbelief, if he spoke forth about the pregnancy, I don't know what would happen. Maybe John the Baptist wouldn't come, wouldn't be born or whatever, I don't know. Um, uh, if something would happen, I don't know. Then how would the ministry of Jesus work out? I don't know. Anyway, so that didn't happen, obviously. But the point is, uh, he had to be silenced. He had to be silenced because he kept, he kept on speaking unbelief and negativity. You know, uh, before I move forward, this is why it's, I just want to point out, brothers and sisters, this is why it's so important who you allow to speak in your life. It's so important who you agree with, who your circle is, who, who, who you surround yourself with. Do you surround yourself with people who speak forth unbelief and fear and and de gan talaga yan maghihirap ka gan kasi nga puro ganyan Who do you surround yourself with Who who are you um who are you constantly listening to Who are you allowing to speak into your your heart and your life Puro unbelief ba Or do you uh, surround yourself with people who know how to speak life who speak blessing upon you who agree with you in faith right so it's really important brothers and sisters who you surround yourself with because if you're stuck with someone who speaks negatively out of the abundance of their heart you're not in good company out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and as a man thinks in his heart so is he proverbs 23 7 king james right so if, if, if in your heart it's always just angry and negative and you are exposed by the words, then that's how you're going to be. You've been speaking forth nothing but negative things. How will you move forward if out of your heart, wala na, mahirap na, makamatay na to, kayo yung ganito, wala, hirap, ang hirap, hanggang dito na lang ako. Yung mga ganyan, those are all curses. Those statements, you are cursing yourself. So don't surround yourself with people like that and don't be that person. You know why? Because when you speak forth unbelief, when you speak forth doubt, you hinder the word of God. How is this possible? Let's go to Matthew 13. Just a few verses here. Matthew 13 verses, thir uh, verses 54 to 58. Matthew 13 verses 54 to 58. In the NASB it says, this is Jesus, okay? He came to his hometown and began teaching them in their synagogue so that they were astonished and said, where did this man get this wisdom and these miraculous powers? Verse 55. Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary and his brothers, James and Joseph and Simon and Judas? And his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get these things? Verse 57. And they took offense at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor, except in his hometown and in his own household. Verse 58, highlight this. Highlight this verse. And he did not do many miracles there because of their unbelief. So, who is Jesus again? Who is Jesus? Jesus is the Word of God. 
right? John 1 verse 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among, the, among us and we saw his glory, glory as of the begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus is the word, became flesh. And in his hometown, he could not do many miracles because of their unbelief. Unbelief will hinder the work of God from, from happening. It will hinder the word of God from manifesting. Unbelief will hinder the promises of God from manifesting. Because the way we, 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 we uh, receive the things given by grace is through faith. Faith is believing. Right? And unbelief is the opposite of faith. So if you speak forth unbelief, how will you receive what God is providing? How will you receive what God has given? Like going back to Zacharias, he prayed for it. And, but he didn't have... But he couldn't even believe that God was answering. So bakit ganun? So he was silenced, right? So the power of the word is there. It's there. The word doesn't lose power. The word is always powerful. The word, the word of God is alive and powerful. It does not lose power. Okay, I want to make that clear. But unbelief will hinder it from manifesting. As you saw in Matthew 13, right, 58, he could not do unbelief. The power of Jesus remained the same, but these people with so much unbelief, the, the, manif the manifestation of that power could not come forth because if they didn't want it. They rejected it. When you reject God's word, don't expect to receive. God will never force you to receive something. So what, what happened is that this guy, Zacharias, was silenced. He was silenced. He was silenced because he would speak forth his unbelief and uh, it, might, it would hinder the Lord's work, the Lord's plan, right? Again, Mary asked the same question, but her intention was to understand. Zechariah asked the same question, but he was speaking in doubt. Mary wanted to understand. She was willing. She was evident. Look at her answer. Luke 138, Mary said, Behold, the bond slave of the Lord, may it be done to me according to your word. You know what a bond slave is? You know, bond slave, bond servant. In, in, in Jewish law, Okay, if you are a slave, you are, uh, they are, the master is obligated to set you free after seven years, at the seventh year, okay? Because there was se seventh day, seventh day God rested, and the seventh year, my rest yung crops, and uh, the seventh of the seventh yung jubilee, na gano'n madaming ganyan eh, sa, sa, sa Levitical law. And uh, as far as slaves are concerned, at, on the seventh year, they have a choice. Either they go free, or they choose to stay with their master. And you call that a bond slave, a bond servant. Kumbaga, I have the choice of freedom to go and live my own life. But my master is so good and so kind and, and has taken care of me. I choose to remain his servant. That is what a bond slave is. The, 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 that you have the choice to do something else, but you willingly choose you willingly choose to submit yourself that, no, I can choose to do this, I can choose to do that. As a slave, I, I now have freedom, but I choose to stay with my master, the Lord. So she calls herself the bond slave of the Lord. And may it be done to me according to your word. She had full trust in the Lord's goodness that she knew that God would not put harm upon her, that God would not inflict anything negative upon her. He, she trusted God so much that she could say, be it done to me according to your word. How many Christians can say that today? So many Christians pick and choose a Bible verse and say, do this for me, do this for me, do this for me. But they never say, Lord, be it done to me according to your word. They never let the word of God dictate their experience to dictate the word of God. And that's not how it works. So many Christians pray to God. They shoot, they shoot up a prayer to God and, and they don't ever expect it to come back. They don't expect it to be answered. They just say, whatever. You see, sinasabing suntok sa buwan. Di naman umaabot, bahala na. That's not how God works. That's not how prayer works. God is not up there. He's in here. You know that? You're not praying just to go up there. No, 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 no. You don't have to send to, 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 to clear up the heavens that the, the devils will intercept. Their... No, 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 no. You have the Holy Spirit now. 
The Spirit of God is in you. So don't get rid of that silly doctrine that says, oh, you have to pray that no demon will hinder your prayers from reaching heaven. He doesn't have to. The Holy Spirit is inside you. God hears our prayers. God knows our needs. Even before we ask, He needs it. So anyway, going back to the words, brothers and sisters, I want everyone to do a heart check. We got to check our hearts here. How do we speak? How do we say things? What do we say? Right? What are your Facebook posts? What have you been messaging people? Right? Think about it. Because out of the abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks. Whatever you're posting on social media, that reveals what's important to you. That reveals what's in your heart. That reveals who you are, where you find your identity. And as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Proverbs 23, 7. Right? So what's in your heart? Your words will reveal what's in your heart. If it's all negativity, that's dangerous because that's, that's who you're going to be. That's who you are. You know, our heart is who we are. It is a combination of both the spirit and the soul. Okay, so what is the heart? Because a lot of people say, with the heart man believes, with the heart this. And it says also in, in Jeremiah that who can know the heart of man? It is, it's the, it is a wicked. The heart of man is desperately wicked. So bakit ganun? There is the heart that is good and the heart of man that is really bad, that is desperately wicked. I think that's Jeremiah 17, 5, somewhere there. I'll, I'll check later. But um, I think somewhere, <laughs> somewhere there or, or, or Jeremiah 9, 24. I don't know. I don't know. I'll check later. Sorry. It's, I, I did not uh, plan on posting it, but I'm sure it's in the book of Jeremiah that says the, the heart of man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Right? Anyway, so... If the heart is of man is wicked, so papano to? Now, I want to explain what your heart is. Okay? What is your heart? It's not just that thing that beats. <laughs> okay? Your heart is actually your identity. Okay? And your heart is a combination of both your spirit and your soul. All right? So, in Hebrews 4, verse 12, I'm going to read this. Hebrews 4, 12. It says, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit, okay? Both of joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So, the heart here, you will discern, the Word of God allows you to discern the thoughts and the intentions of the heart. And what is that? It is the division where your soul and your spirit are joined. That is who you are. That is your heart. That is your heart. That is your heart. Right? That is your heart. So, where the soul and spirit are joined, that is your heart. And the Word of God reveals whether your heart is dominated by the soul, which is the flesh, or the spirit. You see that? Brothers and sisters, that, that is, for me, this is, this, is, this is a great revelation for me. Our heart is composed of where the spirit and the soul meet. But the problem is, our spirit is born again, right? Our soul is still part of the flesh, right? So, spirit, soul, and body. I'm not going to teach that now. If you want to learn more about that, please look at the, check out the teaching about spirit, soul, and body on the YouTube page, all right? But 1 Thessalonians 5.23 tells us that we are made of three parts. Tinuro ko ito sa Tagalog Bible study, okay? So, our spirit, our soul, our body. Our body is this. Our soul is our mind, will, emotions, ego, character. Ugalimo is your soul. And your spirit is, well, before you receive Jesus, you're spiritually dead. When, you're, when you receive Jesus, you became born again. Your spirit was born again. So in your spirit, spirit you are holy, you are sanctified, you, are, you have the divine nature. Your spirit is 100% the spirit of God. Your spirit is is the spirit of Jesus. Your spirit has the power of God. Your spirit has the power to raise the dead. Your spirit has every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realms. Your spirit has everything in you for... It is, it is, it is um, in your spirit that you are truly born again. So now the thing is, how does the body interact with the spirit but through the soul? So the heart is now the combination of the spirit and the soul. Amen? Is that clear? So your heart is the spirit and the soul. So you have a perfect spirit and an imperfect soul. 
because our mind, will, emotions, they are finite. They are not, right? This is still flesh. The body and the soul are still flesh. But now the heart is the spirit and soul. So for you to check your heart, right? Because the, the human heart on its own, just here, just this and, the, and, and no spirit, this, this is wicked. This is the sin nature where, where it existed. When Jesus, when you receive Jesus in your heart, the sin nature died, nailed on the cross. So now God gave you a new spirit and a new heart. Amen? Amen? So the old heart is dead and gone. The wicked heart is supposed to be dead and gone. The problem is, your soul is so used to operating out of the old heart, it has to be renewed by sticking to the spirit. Amen? Na ano ba natin yan? Na ano ba natin yan? So again, ang purpose ng word of God, para himayin. Hihimayin ng word of God, it will, it will dissect, it will divide the, the thoughts and intentions of your heart. The word of God will show you, as you spend time in the word of God, it will show you, are, is your is your heart living out of the flesh or is your heart living more on the spirit? Because this, this, the heart is where the soul and the spirit meet. All right? So, you know, in Ezekiel, 26, uh, Ezekiel 36, verse 26, Ezekiel 36, verse 26, it says, Moreover, I will give you a new heart, okay? And put a new spirit within you. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Guys, when you are born again, again, we need to ko lang yung props ko. I try to make this as simple as possible, right? But again, the spirit, soul, body. Before you are born again, this is dead, right? Soul and body, they are helpless against sin. So it says here, Ezekiel 36 verse 26, I will give you a new heart and then put a new spirit within you. So it's the Holy Spirit. I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Amen? So now, so now you get this, the old heart of stone, the sin nature has been nailed on the cross with Jesus Christ. That's why in Galatians 2.20, it's no longer, it's no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. So your heart of stone is gone. And the Lord has given you a new spirit, which is the Holy Spirit, now that your heart may be aligned. So the thing is, our, our soul and our body is still used to, you know, it's still, it has not yet been perfected. We live, we're still here on earth, right? Until we see Jesus again, whether by death or by second coming or whatever, or rapture or whatever you believe for eschatology. Um, my, my point is, my point is, we now have a new heart. And now... We have a choice. You can choose to operate out of the old nature, which is supposed to be dead, or the spirit. You want to live out of your soul or out of your spirit. So that is the heart, brothers and sisters. We already have the Holy Spirit. We have a new spirit. We have a new identity. We have a new heart. So what we have to do is be conscious if our heart is operating out of the spirit or out of the soul. Amen? Our words matter, brothers and sisters, because it is through the word of God that we discern whether we are in our heart is in the spirit or operating out of the soul. Who is dominating our heart? Is it the flesh or is it the Holy Spirit? And that, you know, that that out of that heart, your mouth will speak. So, you know, if our, if our heart is operating out of the flesh, out of the soul, it will have a hard time agreeing with God's word. Like Zacharias, he was praying, didn't really believe. You know, he had a hard time understanding this. Right? But if our heart is operating out of the Spirit, it will agree with the Word of God. Brothers and sisters, we have to get to a place of faith where our hearts and God's heart are following the same beat. Okay? Yung sa Tagalog, yung sinasabi nun, yung tibok ng puso natin tsaka tibok ng puso ng Panginoon, iisa. Our heartbeats must beat as one. Because God has given us a new heart, a new spirit. So now it's up to us what we do with that heart. Do we, do we harden it again? Right? Because we had hearts of stone. The heart, the heart, it was replaced with a heart of flesh. Now you choose. You want to harden it or you want to keep it focused on the Holy Spirit? Right? So God, you know, Sometimes, 
sometimes God is silent. And this is something that gave me so much peace. I used to pray to God for every little thing. Lord, what do I do? Every small decision. I was so afraid to make a mistake. That was really bad. Okay, I, I trapped myself in a in the law before by I was so I was so sin conscious I was so uh, afraid to make mistakes I was so afraid to sin against God and do this and do that and I thought I was so horrible and um, there was a time that God was silent right and um, and I prayed and I prayed and I prayed and I was like Lord what is this and then one day he revealed to me that I don't have to micromanage you we share the same heart and I started crying because I, I just realized that God trusted me enough I, I started crying because I realized that God trusted me, that I don't have to be so afraid walking on eggshells, that he gave me a new heart. And he said, you know what? You share the same heart. I know your heart. I gave you your heart. So our hearts are aligned. I started crying because that, that, that the Lord showed me that. I was like, who am I, right? But he said so. So I, I'm confident that I'm doing the Lord's work. You know, I'm confident that, okay, Lord, thank you. So I pray. And if I do get out of line, guess what? The Holy Spirit will talk to me. The Word of God will dissect, will show me whether my heart is aligned with the soul or the spirit. As I spend time in the Word of God, the Holy Spirit makes it come alive. And He's going to say, hey, Ron, you're operating out of your soul. You got to be careful, you know, go back, go back. See, that's the beauty of it, brothers and sisters. So, you know, as you spend time in the Word, as you spend time with the Holy Spirit, your heart becomes filled with the Holy Spirit. And out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. And guess what you're going to speak? You will speak life. In Proverbs 23, 7 in the King James, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So in my heart, I know I am blessed. I have the Holy Spirit. I'm blessed. I'm a child of God. I am more than a conqueror. I am victorious in Christ. I'm healed. I'm whole. I'm prosperous. I know who I am in the spirit and that's what's in my heart. And guess what? That's who I am. That's my identity. Amen? So, you know, we may make mistakes and screw up, guys. You know, but, but, but we should be conscious. We should be aware of what is dominating our hearts. Is it our soul or is it our spirit? Is it the Holy Spirit that dominates our hearts? In Proverbs uh, 3, Oh, sorry, Proverbs 4, verse 23. Proverbs 4, verse 23 in the King James, it says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it flow the issues of life. Something like that. Out of it come the issues of life. Keep your heart, meaning guard. Guard your heart with all diligence. Right? Because out of it flow the issues of life. Brothers and sisters, the words that you and I speak reveal what's in our heart. The words that we say, not just what we say, but how, not just how we say it, but why we say it is revealed by our words. You know, to the people who speak death and all that, it's their hearts, that they are living out of the flesh, that their heart has not been, their heart has been hardened. Their heart is dominated by the soul. But if you spend time in the word of God, it will discern the thoughts and intents of your heart. It will tell you. That my son or my daughter, you, you are straying away. You are not following the spirit. You're following the flesh, right? So it's so important, brothers and sisters, to go and spend time in the word of God. It is so important to understand the truth of the word of God. It's so important to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because if not, we might be the ones that are speaking unbelief, right? Like Zacharias was double-minded. I'm not saying he's a bad guy. No, that's not my point. But I'm saying that you, you could hinder the word of God. You could prevent, you could, you could become an obstacle to the word of God from happening, right? Because of unbelief. I have another teaching. Guys, check it out. Seriously, if you're just watching now, or if, if you just tuned in, or if you're new to Metanoia Christian Ministries, th these Bible studies, go check out those messages. Look at Speak Life. Go look at Victorious Prayer. Go look at the Atmosphere of Faith. Atmosphere of Faith, very important message. Super important. Why? Because th the Lord could not do many mighty works where there was an atmosphere of unbelief. Unbelief and speaking it out will, 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 will hinder the Word of God. It's, the Word of God is powerful. It is alive. It doesn't become less powerful. No, no, no. But the effects of it, the manifestation of it may be hindered because of unbelief. 
So don't speak for, if you are tempted to say negative things, if you are tempted to start say, cursing yourself, no, wala na talaga, hanggang dito na lang, wala nang pag-asa, reject that in the name of Jesus. You know, there are some people that talk to me and, uh, you know, some of them, even from my own family, <laughs> you know, I, I, I apologize to them after, but I have to reject their words. Some people go to me and they say, Alam mo, ikaw, kaya ganito, ganyan, tingin ko yung problema mo, ganyan, 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 hanggang dyan na lang yata. And I answer, you know, I reject that in the name of Jesus. I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry, I, I, I do not agree in the name of Jesus. Or some people say things na, oh, dapat ganito, ganyan, tingin ko, ito yung mangyayari kapag ganyan. Oh, I reject that in the name of Jesus. I, I am very careful who I allow to pray over me. Okay? You know, I get a lot of people come up to me and say, Brother, I just want to pray for you. I'm so blessed. Thank you. So, I got a word for you. Whenever um, somebody comes up to me and says that, I, I am, I, I'm polite, guys. You know that. You know, if you've met me in person, I'm polite. I'm not, <laughs> I know. I will listen. But I'm on guard. Just so you know, I just want to be honest and transparent with you guys. I'm on guard. Because if there is a word declared there that is not aligned with the Spirit, I will reject it. And not because I don't like you, I love you, I respect you, I, I care about you, you are my brother, you are my sister in Christ, but I am careful who I allow to speak into my life. Because a lot of people think they're speaking God's word, but they're not. A lot of people think they're prophesying, but they're speaking death. You know, you have all these prophets today saying, oh, and the Lord will have more struggles and a worse virus will come. All these evil declarations and man you are cursing the world speak life my goodness all these so-called prophets speaking you know like i take the office of the prophet seriously if you are the lord's mouthpiece be careful with your words you are you will our words we will have an accounting of our words in the day of judgment you know be careful with your words and because of those words those prophets who speak death and all that reveals what's in their heart so be careful. You know, so again, brothers and sisters, if you guys pray for me, uh, thank you for your prayers. Really, I appreciate it. Don't be, don't, don't be, um, don't be, don't hesitate to come up. I, I would love to be prayed over. I love to receive prayer. Thank you. But please, I'm just saying that if I do respond in that manner, I don't mean any disrespect. I just don't want to receive any words of death. And the Holy Spirit, you know, so that, so, you know, not everybody's on the same page. Not everybody's aligned. There are people that, you know, they think they're doing good, but they're just, not aligned. Hence this message. Brothers and sisters, let us check our hearts. What is coming out of our mouth? Is life coming out or is death coming out? Why do we speak? Not just what or how. A, a powerful speaker of the, of the word of God is not a good orator. Hindi yung magaling magkwento, magaling magsalala. No, 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 no. This is not theater. This is not an act. This is not, this is not, um, this is not a show. This is the word of God. Why you say it is what's important. Why you say it, the conviction in your heart, when you believe in your heart and you, you confess with your mouth, that's when the power of God comes alive. Amen? Amen. So brothers and sisters, well, that's what I got for you today. I pray that that ministered to you. I pray that out of your heart, life will flow. Out of your heart, beautiful things will come out. Out of the overflow and the abundance of your heart, you'll be a blessing to everyone. Like if you ever meet me in person, if you have met me in person, you know I love to speak blessings. I, I never get tired of speaking blessings. Why? Because I'm going to set things in motion in the spiritual realm. There is so much cursing going on. Even people curse themselves. I speak blessings. I speak blessings on everyone. Someone, I'd rather do it. Right? So join me. Out of the abundance of your heart, let your mouth speak let your heart be filled with the word of god let the word of god make sure that your heart is not a heart of stone you're not living out of the flesh your heart is in the spirit amen let's pray lord we thank you for this time i thank you for my brothers and sisters who are watching this and i pray father that they really received from this i pray that we would be better stewards lord of our words for they reveal what's in our heart Father, I pray that my brothers and sisters will truly experience the fullness of your love. I pray, Father, that they will learn to, to truly just value your word. That the more time we spend in your word, Father, the more it, it reveals the thoughts and intentions of our hearts. It shows us, Lord, whether we're operating out of the flesh or out of the spirit. Father, right now we surrender our heart to you. 
It belongs to you and you alone. We want our hearts to beat the same beat of your heart. We want our hearts to be aligned with your heart, Father. As you call David a man after your own heart, that's what we want. We want to be, we want to be your children who take after your same heart, Lord. We want to love the way you do. We want to love with your love. We want to have compassion with your compassion, Lord. We want to bless the way you bless, Lord. So, Father, right now, we just surrender everything we have to you. I pray, Father, that you will bless and continue to bless and strengthen here who is watching. I pray that this revelation of truth, Father, would just be, you know, come alive in their lives. That they will be avenues of your blessing for everyone around them in their sphere of influ influence. That they may learn, that they may truly learn to just speak forth life. That out of the abundance of their heart, they just can't keep that love in there. It's got to come out and speak forth. And they just... That, Father, everyone watching this will be an agent and an avenue of your blessing to everyone. Father, you are such a good God. And we thank you. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your love. We thank you that you have given us every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in our spirit. We thank you, Lord, that we lack no good thing. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us everything pertaining to life and godliness. And we thank you, Lord that you, you, you have blessed us imm immensely. We thank you, Lord. So, Father, I speak a blessing over my brothers and sisters. I speak life upon them. I ask you to continue to strengthen them. Um, provisions for everyone who is in need. I declare healing and health and divine health for everyone out there who is feeling something right now. Whatever infirmity that you have, in the name of Jesus, I cancel it. In the name of Jesus and through the stripes of Jesus, I declare you are healed. In 1 Peter 2.24, I reject any sickness, any ailment, any infirmity, any pain in your body. I command it, get out right now in Jesus' name. Anyone who is disturbed, anyone who is bothered, any spirit who is tormenting you, I command to get out in Jesus' name. I bind and cast that out in Jesus' name. Today is a day of renewal. Today is a day of alignment of hearts. And this day belongs to the Lord. So, Father, we thank you for this. I lift this all up to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, praise the Lord. I pray that I minister to you. If you guys have questions, please send us a message on this page, and we will get back to you as soon as we can. So, brothers and sisters, I'll be back at 4 o'clock tomorrow. And, uh, again, if you missed the Tagalog live message yesterday, we had some problems with the internet and stuff. You can check it out. It's on YouTube. Just... Uh, just type in Metanoia Christian Ministries and you'll find it. Or if you're late from this, w watching this message, it'll be up tomorrow at the same uh, YouTube page. So guys, I love you all with the love of Jesus. I thank you for your love and for your prayers. And I'll see you again tomorrow, 4 o'clock. God bless you.